MLIV has been on fire today talking about this. <laughs> now, we've got two different types of swaps here, right? There are FX swaps and then there are cross-currency basis swaps. Mm -hmm. What are we talking about in this instance? So this is about the, the basis swaps, which basically shows you demand for US dollar funding. So what's happening as we get towards the end of the year is that companies that are borrowed in dollars or companies that have dollar exposure on their balance sheet need to get hold of extra cash in order to firm things up for regulatory purposes and the such like. And uh, the problem is there's not all that much USD out there to lend by the looks of it. So that's pushing up those borrowing costs, showing a demand for uh, fr from the rest of the world, basically, from Europe, from uh, the UK, from the Japan and Mexico, all of those measures going higher today to try to get hold of those, those dollars on their balance sheets. And what are the implications of this? What repercussions does it have through the FX markets? Yeah, well, that's contestable. Some people are saying it should support the dollar, it should be, it should be a bullish for uh, the currency against... Uh, against the euro, for example, because it indicates that where the supply and demand is. But other people are saying that it's more of a short-term thing. It's just a year-end uh, situation. Once that goes again, uh, it, should, it should roll off. So how much matters for currency markets is unclear at this point. But what we can see now is it's not just the three-month mm. basis swaps that are moving, which is typically, you know, kind of covers where we are for the end of the year now, but also it's, it's moving forwards into the one-year tenor as well. So that shows you that there's more demand out there or more concern that this is going to be a, a longer-term phenomenon. All right. So you, you mentioned the fact that perhaps this might just be a year end issue then. Is anyone worried at this point that there could be any kind of stress in Europe's banking system? So that, that's one of the things that this could indicate. And indeed, yeah. during the uh, sovereign debt crisis, if you think back to 2010, 2011, when we were having these kinds of conversations, it was a different scenario, really. There were European banks with large US exposure, talking about French banks, for example, at that point. They needed to get hold of dollars. And because of their creditworthiness, there were concerns and people were demanding higher rates in order to lend to them. No one thinks that that's the case this time. It's not a sign that... Uh, people don't want to lend, it's just a sign the, of the, the supply and demand. But what we can intuit from this is that those people that haven't done their business ahead of time and are exposed to this now are going to have to pay up, pay up a lot in order to get hold of those dollars.